Jerry, yeah. Yeah, I do have a question about the quality. <coughs> in, in the map overlay for the various choices for general education, at least to identify by certain measures of quality. And I'm wondering if we're able to do the same thing for kids with disabilities so that we can see in the various schools and in the various clusters what the quality measures are for kids with disabilities. Um, that's a great point. And We've already taken a couple of steps in that direction. So first of all, I have been uh, ringing the bell that there is no such thing as special education curriculum. So the curriculum for our students is uh, at its foundation, the Massachusetts framework and the Common Core. Uh, we also measure the progress, the, the proficiency and the progress of students with disabilities. But in the past, we have not disaggregated the outcome data uh, in ways that significantly help us look for where the problem areas are and where we need to work. We're starting to do that now. And that's like in terms of <coughs> schools, race, income? All of those things, but also disability area, level of need, and type of setting. So I want to know, for instance, for our children on the autism spectrum who have a high level of need, how are they doing in school? And are there differences then along those lines? So are there differences for children with a high level of need who are on the autism spectrum, who are in a full inclusion placement versus one of those youngsters in, who's in a substantially separate? We can't answer that question today. But then, is there a difference beyond that by which school are they in? Uh, what, what is their race and language um, uh, how did, when and how did they enter the Boston Public Schools? So there are, there are a number of other critical features we want to look at. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Um, I know you said you don't have an answer for it right now, but I'm wondering if you would have an answer before September 2013. If a child is in a resource home and they would, go to, they would have to go to the lottery, would you have an answer before September whether or not they would stay in a placement? Um, well, I'll give you a, a partial answer here, and then, then we'll, let's move into the next, next section and we can talk some more about that. First of all, grandfathering, however it's constructed, uh, will have to apply, will apply to students with disabilities. Secondly, um, we have to decide how we're going to handle resource versus partial inclusion placements um, this fall as the new assignment process is being designed because it's, it's embedded, it's, it's part and parcel to the new assignment process. And so, yes, well before September of 2013, we have to decide how this is going to work. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. So the next section is actually moving into question and answer. So I'm just going to very briefly share um, a couple quick, uh, couple quick points. And let me introduce myself again. My name is Ann Waterman Roy, I'm the Director of Strategic Planning for Boston Public Schools. And I'd like to do <coughs> very quickly a couple things. First, just give you a sense, you've heard a lot of this information. What does this mean in relation, what's this as a, as a process, Where's, what's the next step after this in the process and the timeline? Two, I want to talk about how we're going to gather, how we gather your feedback. Um, and we have both written ways to get your feedback and then our conversation that we're going to have for the remainder of our time. So. First, the timeline, what happens next? As has been mentioned, this is our 12th community meeting. We see these meetings as an opportunity to present these plans and proposals in great detail, to get answer clarifying questions, and hear your feedback. There are a couple more of these uh, scheduled, and then we're, we're, on, we're wrapping them up. Then we'll be making our report, uh, sharing recommendations to the External Advisory Committee. The External Advisory Committee will be considering it, mulling it over, thinking about what's the right step, what, what, taking all these ideas, what's the right next step. They'll be making a recommendation to the superintendent, and, the, and ultimately the recommendation will go to the school committee. And the school committee, is, we are, current timeline is to have the school committee vote on a new plan in December of this year, which would then take effect for the fall of 2014, meaning school choice this year, not going to change. Your choices, if you go on and look up what choices you are for your students for next year, it's not changing for, for fall of 2013. So that's the process. Um, second, we want to get input and feedback from you. So one way to do that is to get it in writing. 
And you, I see a number of orange sheets out here, so I just want to call your attention to a couple of ways of giving us your feedback. So even if we don't hear your voice today, or you don't feel comfortable speaking in this group, we want your feedback and input anyway. So there's an orange document, it's a slightly different shape, but orange, that uh, gives us feedback on this process. We especially like <coughs> page one, which describes you, and the last page, which is specifically feedback around the students with disabilities. So if you can fill this out before you leave, please fill the whole thing if you've got time, but those are the most important pages for, for this meeting. And you can leave that either with one of us or downstairs. Also, you saw this chart up on, uh, Carlton showed this chart before. This is a way of checking. We set out some goals at the beginning of this, as it came from what we heard from families. Equitable access to quality, closer to home for students, etc. We want to know how you think each of these plans line up to those goals. So, particularly here for the, the, the there's a column that says SPED. So for students with disabilities, what we've proposed so far, if you think it meets the goal of providing equitable access to quality, check it off, put an S, check it off, whatever you, if there's, and then you fill in what you think it meets. If it's blank, we know you don't think that we've hit that goal. That's very important to take that feedback so we can tweak or improve before a final recommendation goes through. So this is also very important. And finally, there's a green sheet that's about our process. So how do we do this? How do we have these conversations better? So these are all ways to give us written feedback, and we really appreciate that. Um, now, the rest of this, uh, this time, until 3 o'clock, and we will try to respect your time, is to hear your voices, to answer clarifying questions, uh, to get your feedback on strengths of this proposal and weaknesses, things that need to be improved. And uh, Victoria is going to help us uh, take notes as well. This is a large group. We're so excited to see so many of you here. We won't be able to hear every voice here today. So, but we want to get as many as possible. So I will suggest we spend the next five minutes, and I suggest that you talk to your table to digest some of what you've heard. What are your questions, your reactions? Uh, and so you each get a chance within your table to talk a little bit about this. And then we will open it up and have open uh, dialogue. And we'll try to touch as many of the tables as possible so we hear from as many different perspectives as possible. So uh, that is what I suggest for process in terms of norms. Please, uh, we'd ask for a respectful dialogue that we uh, end. Ah, good idea. Um, so I'll leave that to you to decide who's the cluster, maybe four or five people near you, to, uh, to maybe turn and talk uh, or talk with people in your row and uh, discuss. And we will try to hit um, so maybe this front row with, I see Evelyn in the yellow sweater, I know you're even, and the next row and the next row in the back. We'll try, maybe you group a little and talk to each other, okay?